Welcome back here on theCUBE. I'm John Walls. We're in Las Vegas at the Venetian. And this is reInvent 22 and the Executive Summit sponsored by Accenture. Glad to have you with us here as we continue our conversations. I'm joined by Paul Puckett, who's the former director of the Enterprise Cloud Management Services at the U.S. Army. Paul, good to see you, sir. Hey, you as well, John. Thank you. And Justin Shirk, who is Managing Director and Cloud Go-To-Market Lead at Accenture Federal Services. Justin, good morning to you. Good morning, John. Yeah, uh, glad to have you both here on theCUBE. First time, too, I believe, right? Yes, yeah. sir. Well, welcome. I, I wish we had some kind of baptism or indoctrination, but uh, <laughs> I'll see what I can come up with in the next 10 minutes for you. Uh, let's talk about the Army, uh, Paul. So, Enterprise Cloud Management, U.S. Army, um, you know, I can't imagine the scale we're talking about here. I can't imagine the solutions we're talking about. I can't imagine the users we're talking about. Uh, just for our folks at home, paint the picture a little bit of what kind of landscape it is that you have to cover with that kind of title. Sure, the United States Army, about 1.4 million people, uh, obviously a global organization uh, responsible for uh, protecting and defending the United States as part of our sister services in the Department of Defense. Um, uh, and scale often comes up a lot, right? When we talk about any uh, capability or solution for the United States Army, scale is the, the number one thing. Uh, but oftentimes people overlook quality first. Uh, and actually when you think of uh, the partnership between the Army and Accenture Federal, uh, we thought a lot when it came to establishing the Enterprise Cloud Management Agency that we wanted to deliver quality first when it came to adopting cloud computing and then scale that quality. And not so much be afraid of the, uh, the scale of the Army and the size, uh, that forces us to make bad decisions because we want to make sure that uh, we proved that there is opportunity and value in the cloud first, mm -hmm. uh, and then we wanted to truly scale that. Uh, and so, uh, no doubt, an, an immense challenge. Uh, the organization's been around for now three years, uh, but I think that we've uh, established a, a irreversible momentum when it comes to uh, modernization leveraging cloud computing for the so Army. So, let's back up. You kind of throw it in there, the yeah. ECMA. Um, so this agency was, was your a collaboration, right, to create from the ground up. Uh, and it's been three years in existence. So let's just talk about that. What went into that thinking? Uh, what went into the planning? And then how did you actually get it up and running to the extent that it is today? Sure, well it was uh, once the Enterprise Cloud Management Office. It was a directorate within the, uh, the CIO G6 of the United States Army. So at the headquarters of the Army, uh, the Chief Information Officer and the G6, which is essentially the military arm for all IT capability, uh, were once a joint uh, organization, and the ECMO was created to catalyze the adoption of cloud computing. The Army had actually been on a, a cloud adoption journey for many years, uh, but there wasn't a lot of value that was actually derived, and so they created the ECMA, uh, well the ECMO at the time, brought me in as the director, uh, and so we were responsible for establishing the new strategy for the adoption of cloud. Uh, one of the components of that strategy uh, was essentially we needed an opportunity to be able to buy cloud services at scale. And this was part of our buy, secure, and build model that we had in place. Mm -hmm. And so as part of the buy piece, we put an acquisition uh, strategy together around how we wanted to buy cloud at scale. Uh, we called it the Cloud Account Management Optimization OTA. Just rolls right off the tongue. It just <laughs> rolls right off the tongue, and for those that love acronyms, <laughs> CAMO. Uh, and Which I liked it when I was to say camo. I, I loved that. That was that was you, clever. You always have to have like a, a little, a little, a little yeah, piece in there. Very good. It was good. <laughs> uh, but at the time, it was Novetta. And Novetta has been bought up by AFS. But Novetta won uh, that agreement, and so we've had this partnership in place now for just about a year and a half for buying cloud computing at scale. So let's talk about about what you deal with on, on the federal services side here, Justin, in terms of the Army. So, obviously governance a major issue, compliance a major issue, security, you know, paramount importance, and all that stem leads up to quality that Paul was talking about. So when you were looking at this, and keeping all those factors in, in your mind, right, um, I mean, how many, like, oh my God, <laughs> what kind of days did you have? Oh, well. Because this, this was a handful. Well, it, it was, but you could see uh, when we were responding to the acquisition that uh, it was really you know, forward thinking and forward leaning in terms of how they thought about uh, cloud acquisition and cloud governance and cloud management. And it's really kind of a sleepy area, like cloud account acquisition, everyone's like, oh, it's easy to get in the cloud, you know, run your credit card on Amazon and you're in, in 30 seconds or less. That's really not the case uh, inside the federal government, whether it's the Army, the Air Force, or whoever. Right. Um, those, those are the real challenges in procuring and acquiring cloud. And so it was clear from you know, Paul's office that they understood those challenges and we were excited to really meet them with them. And, and how, I guess, uh, from an institutional perspective, before mm -hmm. this was, right, I assume very protective, very tight, cloistered, right, you, 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 in terms of 
being open to or, or a more open environment, there might have been some pushback. Oh, so sure. Was there not right? So yeah, dealing absolutely. with that, well, what did you find that to be the case? Well, so there's kind of a few pieces to unpack in that. Um, there's a lot of fear and trepidation around something you don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so part of it is the teaching and training and the, and the capability and the opportunity in the cloud and the ability to be exceptionally secure when it comes to, no doubt, the sensitivity of the information of the Department of Defense. Um, but also from an action acquisition strategy perspective, more from a financial perspective, um, the DOD is uh, accustomed to buying hardware. We make these big bets of these big things to, to live into data centers. Uh, and so when we talk about consuming cloud as a utility, there's a lot of fear there as well because they don't really understand how to kind of uh, pay for something by the drink, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, because it incentivizes them uh, to be more efficient with their utilization of resources. But when you look at the budgeting process of the DOD, there really is not that much of an incentive for efficiency. The PPBE process, the planning, programming, budgeting, execution, right. they care about execution, which is spending money. And you can spend a lot of money in the cloud, <laughs> right. uh, but how are you actually utilizing that? And so what we wanted to do is create that feedback loop. And so the utilization is actually fed into our financial systems that help us then estimate into the future. And that's the capability that, that we partnered with AFS on, is establishing the, the closing of that feedback loop. So now we can actually optimize uh, our utilization of the cloud and that's actually driving better incentives in the PPE process. You know, when you think about these keywords, you know, modernize, digitize, data driven, so on and so forth, I, I don't uh, think a lot of people might connect that to the US government in general, just because of, you know, it's a large, uh, intentionally slow moving bureaucratic machine. Right, is that fair to characterize it that way? It is, but not in this case, right? So right. what we've so done- Right, so now you totally yeah. juxtapose yeah. that. You know. Yeah, so what we've done is uh, we've really enabled uh, data-driven decision making as it relates to cloud accounts and cloud governance. And so we have a, a tool called Cloud Tracker uh, that we deployed for the Army at a number of different classifications, and you get a full 360 view of all of your cloud utilization and cloud spend, you know, really up to date within 24 hours of it occurring, right? And there are a lot of folks, you know, they didn't, never went into the console, they never looked at what they were spending in cloud previously, and so now you just go to a simple web portal and see uh, the entire, entirety of the army uh, cloud spend right there at your fingertips. So that really enables like better decision making in terms of like purchasing savings plans and reserved instances and other uh, sorts of AWS specific uh, tools to help you save money. So Paul, tell me about Cloud Tracker then. Yeah. I mean, from the client side then, because you're saying this dashboard lays it out for you, right, in great detail about what kind of usage, what kind of efficiencies, I assume. Yeah. Uh, what's working, what's not? Absolutely, well, in, in a, I think a few things to unpack that's really important here is, listen, any cloud service provider has a console, you can see what you're actually spending. But when it comes to money in the United States government, there are different colors of money. There's regulations when it comes to how money is identified for different capabilities or incentives, uh, and you've got to be very explicit in how you track and how you spend that money mm -hmm. from an auditability perspective. Beyond that, there is a move when it comes to the technology business management, which is the actual labeling of what we actually spend money on for different services or labor or software. And what Cloud Tracker allows us to do is speak the language of the different colors of money. It allows us to also get very fine grain in the actual analysis of from a TBM perspective what we're spending on. But then also it has real time hooks into our financial systems for execution. Mm -hmm. And so what that really does for us is it allows us to complete the picture not just be able to see our spend in the cloud, but also be able to see that spend in context of all things in the PPPE process, mm -hmm. as well as the execution process, that then inf really empowers the government to make better investments. And all we're seeing is uh, either cost avoidance or cost savings, simply because we're able to close that loop, like I said, yep. and then we're able to redirect those funds, re-tag them, remove them through our actual financial office within the headquarters of the Army, mm -hmm. and be able to repurpose that to other modernization efforts uh, that Congress is essentially asking us to invest Right, so you know how much money you have, basically, exactly. right? You know how much you've already spent, you know how you're spending it, and now you know how much you have left. And exactly. you can provide a reliable forecast for your spend. Right, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're halfway through this quarter, we're halfway through yep. the, the, the fiscal year, whatever the case might be. Exactly. And the focus on expenditures, you know, the government rates you on, you know, how much have you spent, right? So you have a clear total transparency into what you're going to spend through the rest of the fiscal. Sure. All right, let's just talk about the relationship quickly then about going forward then in terms of federal services and then what on, on the, uh, the, the U.S. Army side. I mean, what, now you've laid this great groundwork, right? You have a really solid foundation. Where now? What next? 
we want to be all things cloud uh, uh, to the Army. I mean, we think there's tremendous opportunity uh, to really aid uh, the modernization efforts and governance uh, across the holistic part of the Army. So, you know, we just, we, we, want, to, we want to do it all with the Army as much as we can. It's, uh, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, AFS is, uh, is in a very uh, kind of a strategic role. So as part of the ECMA, we own the greater strategy and execution for adoption of cloud on behalf of the entire Army. Now when it comes to delivery of individual capabilities for mission here and there, that's all specific to system owners and different organizations. AFS plays a different role in this instance where they're able to more facilitate the greater strategy on the financial side of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've done is we've proven the ability to adopt cloud as a utility. Rather than this fixed thing, kind of predict the future, spend a whole bunch of money and never use the resource, mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing the efficiency for the actual utilization of cloud as a utility. This actually came out um, as one of the previous NDAAs. And so, how we actually address NDAA, I believe it was 2018, uh, in the adoption of cloud as a utility, really is now a cornerstone of modernization across all of the DOD, mm. and really feeds into the joint war fighting cloud capability, major acquisition on behalf of all of the DOD, to establish buying cloud as just a common service for everyone. And so we've been fortunate to uh, inform that team of some of our lessons learned, uh, but when it comes to the partnership, we just see Camo uh, moving into production. Uh, we've been live for now a year and a half, and so there's another two and a half years of runway there. Um, and then AFS also plays a strategic role as part of our cloud enablement division, which is essentially, back to that teaching part, helping the Army understand the opportunity of cloud computing, align the architectures to actually leverage those resources, and then deliver capabilities that save soldiers' lives. Well, you know, we've, we've always known that the Army does its best work on the ground, and you've done all this groundwork for the military, so I'm not surprised, right? It's, it's a winning formula. Thanks to, to both of you for being with us here in the Executive Summit. Great conversation. Awesome, thanks for having us, Good John. deal, all right, thank you. All right, you are watching the Executive Summit, sponsored by Accenture here at reInvent 22, and you're catching it all on theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.